Hello everybody. I welcome you all for a new research concepts and these research concepts are Biotechnica are leading into ideas transforming to innovation. So for today's uh, video, we are trying to understand the experimental studies on the buzzing topic and this is the gut microbiome. How exactly we can set up this particular experiment in our laboratory and we can make a component in our PhD thesis or a postdoc thesis. Let's try to understand this. Let's dive in. Welcome back. As I promised you that we are looking at a very, very important topic and this is on the experimental studies in studying gut microbiome. Now, before we start, we need to understand what exactly is the microbiome. Okay, so when I look into the tree of life, the tree of life comprises of bacteria, archaea and eukarya and you can see where exactly humans lies. That is where we actually lie, wherein we as homo sapiens are into a very small niche of the entire tree of life. But however, for me to understand how exactly these bacterium, fungus or virus are been associated with my body, I need to study their association patterns. And these association patterns, that is the sum total microorganism which comprises my human system, okay, is called as the microbiome. But however, there is a different consortium of microorganisms on my skin, different kind of microorganisms on my oral cavity or my buccal cavity and very very specifically there is a beautiful consortium of microorganisms which are residing in my small intestine and these are nothing but your gut microbiome. So what I am trying to make you understand is we have a, a, a combination of bacterium and these bacteria could be a good bacteria and bad bacteria. So whenever in my body the higher concentration of back, back, good bacteria increases, I am considered as healthy and whenever the bad bacteria concentration increases and the good bacteria decreases, that is mean to say I am sick or I am unwell. So that is where a disease component can set in. So this equilibrium, this homeostasis of good bacteria and bad bacteria plays a predominant role in the health of the organism and hence it is rightly said that your stomach acts as your second brain. Let us try to move forward. Now when I look into the bacterial densities, so if I put up the, the entire global microbes, okay, which can be considered as 10 to the power of 30. So, and if you look into the all the densities in the aquatic system, sediment system, soil system and subcellular system, this is around 10 to the power of 30. But however, when I just look into the lower abdominal intestinal tract of, you know, uh, of homo sapiens or human beings, it is per individual, it is more than 10 to the power of 14. So you are able to relate among half of the organisms which are residing on the entire globe, okay, half of the population, you know, is just in my system. So I can just uh, correlate that for a microorganism, my entire body acts as a universe. Now, there is a commensal association between the microorganisms and the human system. Now, as I was trying to make you understand, there is a huge amount of complexity and diversity which exists between the microbiome that is gut microbiome and with that of the homo sapiens or that of the human. So, hence it in with respect to time, this complexity and diversity actually changes. So, let us try to understand how exactly this complexity actually changes the entire genetic, you know, physical and physiological makeup of a human being. Now, this is called as the shaping up of the microbiome or the shaping up of the microbiota. Now, if you can just imagine, you know, when you were born, again, uh, when you were born, the mode of delivery, that is, whether it was a C-section delivery, we call it as a rooftop delivery or whether it was on a normal labor, okay, makes a difference on the adherence of microorganisms or the consortium of microorganisms when a, a, a particular individual has. So when we were just unborn, we were in the fetal uh, you know, condition, okay, the kind of microorganism, their association was entirely different. When the same fetus, you know, gets delivered and then it will, if it has been breastfed, then the consortium of microorganisms is different. If it is on a formula fed food, again, the consortium of microorganisms 
microorganisms is different and then if by any point of time if there is a solid food which was been given to the baby then again the entire you know combination of microorganisms actually diverse so you will be surprised to know you know the moment you were been born and when you have been brought from the hospital to the house your residence even having a pet in your house having a dog or a cat in the house can also play a profound role on the consortium of microorganisms what you persist so now the later part again you know at a toddler form again there are a set of different kind of microorganisms so here you are able to differentiate between you know uh, the microorganisms which are responsible for malnourishment or the microorganisms which actually responded for the antibiotic treatment now under adulthood stage you can also see that how exactly the microbial consortium changes between an healthy individual to that of the diseased individual or a disordered individual example somebody is suffering with obesity somebody is suffering with diabetes somebody is suffering with hypertension somebody is actually suffering with anxiety even there is an association of microorganism with you know anxiety and depression so later part of life again uh, that the, the previous part would be because of your uh, lifestyle disorders now the later part is the final repercussions wherein from the age 65 to 80 there are various kinds of microbial changes which takes place and this can lead into a very very bad health so what we are trying to make you understand is you know the kind of microorganism what you what you persist can play a very very important role in the health of a given individual now um, what is the impact of these microorganisms on, on, on a disease susceptibility. Example, let us try to take up a, a, a clear cut illustration of allergy. Okay, it could be because of autoimmune disorders or it could be because of, uh, you know, uh, metabolic disorders or it could be because of the habit and habitat in which the organism or the human, uh, who, uh, you know, is actually residing. So this can lead into various kinds of uh, hypersensitive reactions. And again, it has been speculated that for all you know various kinds of mechanisms it is the microbial or the microbial metabolite could be directly or indirectly responsible now this is mainly contributed by the regulation and dysregulation of the microbiome please remember whenever there is a regulation that would be considered that is very importantly let me try to take an example of bacteroids and formicutes so whenever I have a higher concentration of bacteroids, this means to say my body is trying to produce good kind of metabolites and because of that I am healthy. But on certain conditions when this bacteroids concentration decreases and formicutes actually increases, formicutes is one larger family which contains most of the pathogenic varieties of bacteria. So whenever I have a higher consortium of uh, formicutes in uh, either in the in the feces or you know in the in the short chain fatty acid metabolite or into the the nasal system or into the oral system or into the gut microbiome or even on the skin we are able to identify whether the person is healthy or he is under dysregulated combination so let us try to make an illustration here so under a normal gut okay so you have uh, a beautiful combination and please remember the bacteroids or the metabolites which have been produced by the bacteroids will be so strong enough to suppress the formicutes but however under certain condition of like obesity or any kind of a disease this uh, you know equilibrium is been broken down so from regulation this will get transformed into dysregulation under dysregulated condition the concentration of firmicutes actually increases and this will lead into the decreased bacteroids condition so this might you know uh, be an indicator uh, or a biomarker for diagnosing a particular disease. So what we are trying to tell you is if you are working on cancer, you can work on cancer microbiome. If you are working on diabetes, then diabetes microbiome. So you can relate microbiome for anything and every kind of a disease what you are trying to study. So uh, apart from this, people are also trying to connect microbiome with that of the, the immunological system. As you know that bacterioids which are mainly regulating the, you know, T regulatory cells and uh, firmicutes normally they regulate TH17, TH1, TH2. So here, here comes a point wherein even I can look into how exactly these molecules, these immunolo immunological molecules or if there is an immunological response, how exactly these microbiome or the microbial metabolites are governing the upregulation or dysregulation of the immunological system. Now, finally, you can, uh, you know, you can also understand how is this 
you know, uh, having a profound role on the short chain fatty acids which have been produced. We call it as SEFAs, which have been produced such as butyric acid, propionic acid, you know, valeric acid. So all these, so it is not just the microbiome what you study as the bacterium per se, but however, you can study the association of these bacterium with that of immunological cells. You can study this association with that of the uh, no, uh, short chain fatty acids. So this all put together can actually define the methodology for disease diagnosis, therapy and treatment. So how exactly you analyze data? Here comes, you know, the very important role of bioinformatics. So if you ask me, sir, why should I learn bioinformatics? Okay, uh, this is a reason where wherein, you know, bioinformatics goes hand in hand with biochemistry. It goes hand in hand with molecular biology. And now with this particular technological era, it becomes very, very important that we need to understand bioinformatics. And that is why uh, Biotechnica makes a very important point wherein we give hands-on training and we give intense training uh, in terms of bioinformatics so that every life science student, every biologist must and should know bioinformatics so that this can actually enhance the knowledge of science and that is where we, we actually you know organize a lot of internships, lot of certification programs, lot of online programs, offline programs so that every student of life science could be benefited. Coming back. Now, once I have the microbial composition, how do I analyze it? So this could be analyzed by using 16S RDNA Amplicon analysis uh, for which you can use various softwares, uh, uh, two important bioinformatics softwares which are on open source and which are very, very effective in understanding the microbial consortium is one is Chime and the other one is, you know, Mother. Chime refers to the, uh, the entire or OTU that is operational taxonomical unit and it takes OTU as a indicator on V3, V5, V7 and V9 region so that you can actually have the sequence you know deeper and deeper so that you remove the additional amount of chimeras. When you remove the additional amount of chimeras, you get the readable molecules, you get the re readable fragments. But as we also know that everybody are, most of the conditions we are suffering with a disorder which is called as leaky gut syndrome. Now this leaky gut syndrome can cause, you know, variation in the brain, variation in the skin, thyroid, uh, colon cancers, uh, adrenals, you know, joint pain, rheumatoid arthritis, you know, it can also play a very, very important role in your cough and cold. So hence, what people are trying to do is, people are trying to see the association of the diet Okay, it could be a vegan diet, it could be a glucogenic diet, it could be a ketogenic diet and how exactly microbiome could be actually, uh, you know, uh, regulated in a much better way so that uh, we can understand this association in much, uh, you know, in a, in a much deeper sense. Uh, the entire intention is to develop a role model food. Okay, until now, there is nothing which is called as a role model food. So, the our role model diet. So people across the world, uh, they are trying to design something which is called a role model diet, which could be consumed by the entire, uh, you know, population of a given country. So that, uh, you know, we know what, what kind of a crops could be grown to keep, uh, you know, to, to actually enhance the health of a, a, a particular population or how can we actually reduce the, the, the financial burden, especially in terms of disease and disorders of a given country. There's a lot of work which has been going on in this particular arena. Uh, you know, if you feel that you can also contribute, you know, at Biotechnica, we are always there for your assistance. Now, the entire uh, gut epithelium uh, is again, uh, you know, uh, depends on what exactly you eat and what is the physiology of your, uh, you know, intestinal gut. So this can lead into a study such as prebiotic, you can study probiotic, you can study fermented, uh, you know, end products. Okay, you can study the short chain fatty acids or you can also study how can you have the pH stabilizers so that, you know, either having an acidic environment or an alkali environment which can lead into acidosis or ketosis could be again regulated. Finally, this can regulate the colonic health. Now, once you regulate the colonic health, the entire body uh, will remain as healthy and with this as a pipeline, okay, a lot of research is going on in terms of gut microbiome. So finally, I just wanted to convey that, you know, at Biotechnica, we are here for your assistance. 
you know, if it is uh, life science research, if it is biotechnology related research, if you require any kind of assistance in terms of drug design, drug discovery, drug discovery pipelines, microbiome analysis, big data analysis, we at Biotechnica, we are here for your assistance and uh, you know, your success is our motivation. So you keep on succeeding, we keep on innovating and that is how, especially in this innovation series, we make sure that you know, every subscriber of Biotechnica, you know, attains that particular, you know, great richness and heights of science so that everybody has been satisfied at uh, not just at a physical level, but however, it is at an intellectual level and a cognitive level, you are supreme than other animals. So this is how, you know, we can contribute to our society so that we can minimize suffering. So thank you very much for staying connected. Goodbye.